your point of view too far I need to zoom in Ain't got no facts You assuming About to call them blue The way you be cluing Stay awake, not woke I'm tuned in Your point of view too far I need to zoom in Ain't got no facts You assuming About to call them blue The way you be cluing Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages all across the world. You are now tuned in with me. My name is Chandler Crump, and this is the Chandler Brief. As you guys can tell, I think since the last time we've streamed, there has been some massive changes to our set and studio here, and also just to the way things look entirely. Expect a whole lot more coming very, very soon as we revamp our entire live streaming setup. Shout out to everybody we have in the building tuning in on YouTube, on Rumble, on Gitter as well. I appreciate all you guys, especially my folks on those alt tech platforms. Those are the future, and I want to invite everybody who's on YouTube once again to subscribe to me over on Rumble. It's only a matter of time before these big tech platforms stop allowing us to say anything on here. As you guys know, I've received countless community guideline strikes, but we're still here on YouTube for now, still making great updates to the studio and to the stream, and a whole lot more is coming very, very soon. It's all a great work in progress, and I couldn't do it without all of your guys' support and without these fun shows that we do every week on Mondays and Wednesdays at 4, and Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8. However, this Monday is a very, very special Monday, as it is the first time and the first Monday we are streaming in the month of September, and it is our very first show this month, and this is... Uh, going to be one of my last shows, like in the last five or so shows, I will do before I turn 18 in my legal adult. So, really fun stuff. We're going to be doing all sorts of cool things as we move forward in this month. Expect all sorts of cool news. And last things last before we jump into our stories of the day. Happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day, folks. I know it's not a, it's not the most popular holiday. Nobody really, uh, not a lot of people are all like, let's go Labor Day. But I think it's still a really important thing to celebrate. So shout out to all the folks who are taking their break today and those that work very, very hard for our country to move that economy along, to support their families. Whatever reason you have to do it, or I guess all of the above, we appreciate you. But anyways, without any further ado, shout out to Mandatory Carry, Aaron Berenger, all my folks on all of our platforms. Let's jump into the show today because we've got some just straight up hilarious stuff. We're going to show a few different angles of the story here, so get ready for this. A judge has granted President Trump's request to have a special master review Mar-a-Lago raid documents. Now, if you asked me what a special master was a week ago, I probably would have assumed it was something to do with slavery, in all honesty, because I'm no legal mastermind or anything, and anytime I hear the word master, unfortunately, I'm just going to think of some really terrible things, because that's just what they want to hammer into our young Gen Z brains. But Un or, but fortunately, I'm hearing this phrase in this context, and I'm thinking, well, that has something to do with something not slavery. Uh, and my educated guess is that it's an independent sort of reviewer, sort of like the special prosecutor we had in Robert Mueller, but more so independent and just looking for the truth, not necessarily to uh, prosecute. But let's jump in and see if I can get a bit of a better understanding. I know some of my legal experts, my legal eagles are just looking at the screen going like, nope. 
They're screaming like, Chandler, you've got it all wrong. This is it. So let's learn a bit more. A judge has granted President Donald Trump's request to have a special master. Yada, yada, we read that. Trump's motion to appoint a special master to review the seized property for personal items and documents and potentially privileged materials subject to claims of attorney client and or executive privilege. The judge also temporarily enjoins the government from reviewing and using the seized materials pending the completion of the review. Now, I know what that means. That means the federal government, the FBI, the DOJ cannot get their grubby little hands in all this fun little... But this fun information that the special master is going to be taking a look at so they can't just straight up indict trump uh, they can't do it so that means trump is home free for a little bit of time um <laughs> and uh well i think he'll be good so we're gonna see what the special master does but let's read a bit more the ruling which was issued by labor day on labor day grants trump the ability to stall the fast-moving proceedings that have taken place since the raid on august 8th the legal team made its demands in a Florida court after the decision by another judge to release the heavily redacted affidavit that allowed the FBI to obtain a warrant to search the former president's residence. Uh, the federal government responded by releasing a 36-page filing that claimed to reveal new information about the extent of classified material that agents found during the raid. They're saying there's a whole lot more than we thought before, and we need to take some deeper looks, and we need this, and we need that. Everybody's trying to look for something. It's it's just insane, and I, I, don't, I don't even know what to tell you guys. Uh, Nancy says, just don't change your set into the speech from the pits of hell set like O Biden had. Well, Nancy, sadly... It seems that's exactly what's about to happen because you said it. Isn't that just fun? Isn't isn't it fun just changing the colors up on you? No, no, we're not gonna be like oh Biden today. We're gonna keep things fun, okay? Date Slav says eyes. They already got their hands on the documents. They already know what's there. The damage is done. Well, this does prevent them from actually doing anything with it and getting more because it seems like they seemed like they wanted to do something like that, but they won't be able to. Like I said, I'm not the one that's going to understand this fully. But I'm not the only one. As you can see, people on Twitter are furious. Uh, Rob Reiner says Trump being granted a special master to review the top secret classified documents that he stole will just slow things down. It will not protect him from his crimes. He will be indicted. Uh -uh. It's going to happen. Trump is going down. And, uh, it's no use for him to even try and defend himself. Sadly, I, I, don't, I don't know if these people are going to be right in the end. Uh, election wizard said Trump won special master coin appointed lawyer will review confidential materials so used during the FBI raid and will prohibit the DOJ from using docs for investigative purposes in the meantime. Special master has been appointed. Hope he's not deep state. Uh, everybody's got different things to say. Federal judge hands Trump a win. Lots of different tweets about it, but I want to go into the latest section and see because the latest is how you get to see the real people because top is just what what Twitter wants you to see or based off of your following. But this will be good. Um... Wouldn't any classified or higher documents given to the POTUS potentially certain uh, contain high-level advice to the POTUS? What possible basis would some random special master have to tell the difference? This whole review is nonsense. Hillary Clinton should be the special master. <laughs> uh, she'll be special, all right. It's tre If treason is Trump doesn't know the special master, he will as soon as his name is released. Then Trump and his lawyers should be put under physical electronic surveillance because I bet they will make a visit to him or her. Wow. Wow, so put Trump under surveillance and his team. And his team. That's Christina, Bob, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. Mandatory carry says, okay, Darth Chandler. Let me tell you, Mandatory carry, I find your lack of faith concerning. Is that how the quote goes? I don't know. I haven't watched, I don't think I've watched that Star Wars movie. I don't think I've watched that one where that quote comes from. It's your lack of faith or something like that. I, I know it's, I, I, I probably butchered it and my mandatory, mandatory carry and all my Star Wars fans are curr currently screaming at me for getting it wrong. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Anybody, Trump wanted to just, just tweeting the article. Imagine if Obama is the special master. Hashtag Trump is going to prison. So obviously lots of people talking about this. Quite a few people being like, we need to, we need to get Trump out of here. Talking about we need the, uh. Yeah, I'll just get that special master out of the way, throw him in prison, throw him in jail, whatever they decide. But we need to take a look at the other side because, you know, Hunter Biden never got a special master or anything because they snapped their fingers and the investigation vanished into thin air. But of course, if you ask the FBI or DOJ about it, they'll be like, well, we can't, we can't comment on a live investigation and, uh, wait. Uh, I don't know what I said, uh, I don't, I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about. There is no investigation. Stop lying. Stop the cap. But unfortunately, it seems like this person might not be capping in the end. And Date Slav Carey tells me it's disturbing. Okay, your lack of faith, disturbing. Is it faith or is it something else? I don't know. Anyways, FBI agent Timothy Thibault 
I think that's how you pronounce that, hid intelligence from Whistleblower on Hunter Biden and the big guy who is supposedly Joe Biden. Oh, man. <laughs> this stuff just can't get any better than this. We're jumping into our show, guns a-blazing, people are roaring and screaming, and FBI agents spilling all the beans. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these brief messages from our sponsor. But this is about to get good, so don't turn the page. Hey, Freethinkers. Chandler here, and... <sighs> Man, I'm sure your day-to-day -day life leaves you just as, if not more tired than me. So why not elevate your night's sleep? Pillows, blankets, sheets, mattresses. As you can hear by me droning on in the background, the list of my pillow products is long and varied, and sometimes, dare I say, ridiculous. But it all goes towards an amazing cause, all the while giving you the best night's sleep in the whole wide world. Go to MyPillow.com and use code C-R-U-M-P, that is code CRUMP, for your very own discount today. Now, let's get back to the show. Yeah, these pillows are really starting to stack up in my office. I think I had like three or four of them in here to show off. I might have to gut one of them and start using it as another pillow at night. But let me tell you guys, these things are magic. Make sure you get yourself a pillow. I've been sleeping on them. It was absolute travesty to not sleep on them the last few days as I was out of town for a little bit, uh, enjoying Labor Day weekend with family. Um, and I did not bring my pillow along and it was hideous let me tell you you're lucky i don't get you know morning crankiness or anything but let me tell you i probably would have jumped on twitter and started angry tweeting at my pillow saying why don't i have a travel pillow so i need to fix that problem and if you don't want to be cranky in the morning you should fix that problem as well go to mypillow.com or mystore.com and get yourself a pillow or coffee or anything today trust me they've got some good stuff and make sure you use code crump for your discount on all that good stuff today including energy drink mix a book about the election Bionic Ranch, all that good stuff. I won't go on any longer, but trust me, they've got some great stuff up there that you're going to want to check out. Uh, Aaron says, it is lack of faith. Nathan says, I wonder how many my pillow." <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, that's good. Oh, Nathan, that, that's good. I wonder how many my pillows Hillary has used on her victims. Fire for that. You need to get out of my chat. That's wrong. That's wrong. Okay, let's jump into this next story before uh, Hillary starts sending a pillow my way, because uh, who knows what might, what, what might happen. <laughs> She's going to get me. Uh, Tom Timothy Thibault, the FBI agent who was alleged to have interfered with an investigation into Harder Biden, was assigned by the Washington field office as point man to manage whistleblower Tony Bobulinski, the first son's former business partner before the 2020 election, but he suppressed his revelations, sources say. Bobulinski spent over five hours secretly being interviewed by the FBI on October 23, 2020, about his inside knowledge of then-presidential candidate Joe Biden's involvement in the business deals with China. The previous day, he had revealed in a big press conference that Joe Biden was the big guy due to get a 10% cut of a lucrative joint venture with Chinese energy firm CEFC, which is also currently trending on Twitter, according to an email found on Hunter Biden's abandoned laptop. Bobulinski gave the FBI the contents of three cell phones containing encrypted messages between Hunter and his business partners, along with emails and financial docs detailing the Biden family's corrupt influence, peddling operation in, for in foreign countries during Joe's vice presidency. But his evidence appears to have fallen into the same black hole at the FBI as Hunter Biden's laptop, never to be seen again. Yep. yep. Straight up gone. FBI, open up! Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. We don't know what you're talking about. It's gone. Bobulinski's FBI interview came the week after the Post published material from the laptop, including the big guy message and an email from a Ukrainian energy company executive thanking Hunter for organizing a meeting with, Hunt with Joe Biden. On the day Bobulinski went to the FBI's field office, 11 days before the 2020 election, he was told not to walk in the front door, but to arrive in an underground parking garage at the back of the nondescript eight-story building in Northwest D.C., one mile from the FBI headquarters. He was met by James Dawson, a special agent in charge of the Criminal and Cyber Division, and Guilio Arsini. They turned him over to two younger agents, William and Garrett, who conducted the videotaped interview and provided a receipt for Bobulinski's digital data. He told them all about the work with Hunter, his uncle Jim, and partners James and Rob, uh, which they did during Joe's vice presidency in 2015 and 16, using the Biden name to help CEFC expand into Oman, Romania, and other countries. He told them about Hunter's lucrative personal relationship with CFC, CFC, uh, CEFC chairman Yi Jinmeng at the time the company was brokering China's $9 billion acquisition of the Russian state oil giant Rosneft. Ye was arrested in China in 2018 after the deal fell apart. 
<laughs> CEFC was the capitalist arm of China's Belt and Road Initiative to extend the communist regime's influence around the globe. Bobolinsky also told the FBI about Hunter's association with oligarch Mykola Zilovsky, owner of corrupt Ukrainian energy company Burisma. With Romanian billionaire Gabriel Popovicu and the retired FBI director Louis Free, who was brought in by Hunter as a consultant to help Popovicu escape corruption charges in Romania. Holy crap, this guy was literally living GTA. I have said this a few times before during interviews and people have asked me about Hunter Biden and I've made this co correlation before, but it's getting even deeper. Like I knew Hunter Biden was, you know, he, he has so much potential if he could just be a good businessman and not deal in ill-gotten gains like he's playing Grand Theft Auto V and making deals and robbing banks. This guy is meeting with FBI directors to try and secure the safety of his friends because the last guy he didn't secure the safety of the Chinese guy, Mr. Yi, was arrested in China because the deal fell apart. <laughs> and this dude, not only with all the business stuff, he was going out and getting with his dead brother's wife, fathering children with strippers, doing all sorts of disgusting drugs, so much so that his teeth began to fall apart. He was sending all sorts of crazy photos while doing these things, taking pictures of his teeth falling apart. And we have all the evidence of it. We gave it to the FBI and what do we get? Crickets. Crickets, crickets, crickets. I mean, I'm gonna have to add that sound effect because it's, it's, it's all we get. <laughs> the FBI does nothing about it and it begins to kick in the doors of those that are responsible for providing this information to them. The journalists, the investigators, the Americans with rights. Doesn't matter who you are. FBI, open up! Even the president of the United States, former president, whatever it may be, Donald Trump, who didn't have anything to do with securing this Hunter Biden information as much as they impeached him over it, saying, well, he was talking to Ukraine, trying to get information and dirt on Joe Biden. And they impeached him over what he describes the perfect phone call. Freedom of speech doesn't really apply when I guess you're running or currently president of the United States. Doesn't matter what you do. Unless you're Hunter Biden, the son of the vice president and the gladly elected president who likes to sit in front of red lights and shake his arms around at a, absolutely nothing. We're going to talk about that in a minute, too, because he's up to some funny stuff. But man, I just... I can't, I can't stop calling it out. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. They made fun of, of Ben Carson. They made fun of every single person on the right. They made fun of Casey DeSantis when it was announced that she had breast cancer. But Hunter Biden, who, although he was claimed to be clean, still smoking cigarettes and crack and getting down with disgusting ladies, is the beacon of hope and the prime directive for how you should raise your children. The first son. You know, back, back in my day when I was a little bit younger, I used to look at the first family as what you should strive to be, the embodiment of the American dream. Even during the Obama administration, I saw President Obama, Michelle Obama, Malia, and Sasha as a great idea for what a family could be. I looked at my skin, I looked at theirs and say, well, that matches, and you know what? For black children, that's great. Ideologically, economically, whatever it may be, it may not match, but at the very least, you can look at the White House, look at the family, and say, that is something I could strive to be. With presidents before that, it was just as steady, just as stern. With Donald Trump, despite him being in Hollywood and being in big business for all these years, and he had some checkered past, as do most politicians, you know, with the grab him by the whatever and all that mess, and his wife's previous history, they made the White House something to envy. They made it beautiful. They made that family look like something beautiful. Even his adult children came back to him, despite their ability to make a whole lot more money doing real estate, so that they could support criminal justice reform, support his, their father in the executive office, whatever it may be, they gave it all up for us, for the American people. And what did Hunter Biden do with all these years? He gets kicked out of the military, refuses to get off of drugs, lies to the American people, taunts the president of the United States and gets off scot-free with some of the most disgusting things we have ever seen from a member of a first family in American history. That's not something I want to look at and say, well, that's a family I want to have. I don't look at Joe Biden and say, I envy him as a man. I don't look at Hunter Biden and say, I envy him as a son. I wouldn't want my own son to be anything remotely like Hunter Biden. And I'm sure the majority of people in the stream can say the exact same because the Biden family, Jill, Hunter, 
Joe, <laughs> even the dogs, Champ, and whatever the other one's name was that could stop fighting people had to get kicked out, are not paragons of what you should be looking at and saying, yeah, I want that. They are not good examples of the American dream, and they are not good examples of the American family. They haven't been for decades. They haven't been. And it's really sad to say that. <laughs> it really is. Uh, date Slob. Then again, I know I'm going to hell. I'm a great example for all questions and what not to be. Okay. Uh, Aaron says, the Red Sermon was the craziest thing I have seen in a long... Are you talking about Joe Biden's speech? Probably right. Uh, Terry says, super gangster stuff right there. Yeah, with Hunter Biden, the, the dude was playing <laughs> GTA. Somebody turn on the GTA theme because that dude was just playing around. It's crazy. Apocalyptic says, they can say defund the police, but we can't say defund the FBI. What the... Yeah, honestly, it, the FBI used to be cool. The FBI used to be like, yeah, FBI, open up. We're cool. We're going to investigate everything. Now I look at the FBI and say, you're going to kick in my door for something for probably talking about this stuff on the Internet way before the pictures of Hunter Biden doing the disgusting things he's up to. Probably. I'm waiting for the day. FBI, open up! <laughs> and you ain't black. It's coming, folks. It's coming. Anyways, we've got some more news. Stepping back internationally before we zoom back into America. Um, this next one is coming from the United Kingdom. Now, seems like each and every time I'm talking about the UK, it's either a transition of power or some sort of terrorist attack. Thankfully, it's the former today, as the UK will soon have a brand new prime minister and one of the most recent, uh, I was about to say, they've had, actually, they've, they've had a lot of female prime ministers. They've had, uh, they had, what is it, Margaret Thatcher, and I don't know if they had any, any in between that. They had Theresa May a couple years back, and then we had Boris Johnson for a little bit, but he's on the outs. Now we have... Liz Truss. This is some cool stuff right here until we dig a bit deeper and y'all are gonna... Interesting. <clears throat> Liz Truss, who is currently Britain's foreign secretary, will become the United Kingdom's 56th prime minister following the resignation of Boris Johnson in July. Britain's Conservative Party announced Monday that Truss defeated rival Rishi Sunak, who is the former Treasury Secretary in a leadership election, paving the way for Truss to become Britain's third female Prime Minister after Theresa May and Margaret Thatcher. Well, there you go. Truss will become Britain's new Prime, Prime Minister after an audience with Queen Elizabeth on Tuesday. Here's what you need to know about Britain's new Conservative Prime Minister. She grew up in a left-wing household. She's been compared to Margaret Thatcher. I don't want to jump too much into all this stuff. If you guys want to know more, uh, be British and look at British stuff. But I wanted to preface this next story with that little bit right there, now you know who Liz Truss is. But let's take a couple steps back and have a little flashback to, what is it, about 11 years ago to 2011, or I guess at this point mostly still 10 or so. Anyways, uh, this is what she tweeted October 29th, 2011 on her Blackberry. Used to see Jimmy Seville at the Flying Pizza on Street Land Round Hay. Always a conspirates, rest in peace. Now, to most people and to myself an hour ago, this means absolutely nothing. Well, actually, I shouldn't say to most people. I should say to young people, because I know a lot of y'all are older and will have a lot more memories from around this time. I don't remember much from 2011. I mean, I remember a good amount. I remember playing Wii Tennis. But, uh, to those that weren't, like, eight, or no, weren't, like, six when I was in, for the majority of 2011, you'll know that Jimmy Seville, although he did die at around that time, had a lot of mess around him. Now, I'm not going to read too far into this, but um, I think you can see from this headline that he had a lot of mess going around when he was alive. And I'm not, I'm, I don't even want to read it, but you can see why her tweeting this in 2011, shortly after his death, and shortly before all the information about him came out, but why somebody in power like Liz Truss is going to attract a lot of questions. And that's why this tweet now has 5,000 quote tweets, and is approaching a ratio. Ian Miles Chong says, and there it is. Our new Prime Minister, here we go. She's still leaving this tweet up after 11 years, tells us what we need to know. We're finished. <laughs> People are concerned, and dang it, rightfully so. I mean, this would be the equivalent of Donald Trump tweeting in 2018. Uh, used to see Jeffrey Epstein at the... Rocket Pizza on K Street in D.C. Always in good spirits, rest in peace. Like, that is the exact equivalent. Jimmy Seville, although not nearly as rich or as powerful as Jeffrey Epstein, did... <laughs> well, <laughs> there was a lot more people abused by this man. I don't, I don't, I, I can't even find the right number, but I think it was around 500 or so that that had been linked to this. So, obviously, big deal. 
very scary stuff. And this person, within the next 24 hours, will be taking the reins as one of the most powerful people in the United Kingdom. Hands up. Hands up. You just, sometimes you just gotta say, well, dang it, that's what happened. <laughs> and uh, what are we gonna do? What are you gonna do? Eat commies, said Pedo Jimmy and Pedo Pete. Uh, Seville equals Biden. Puckley says, I think Fox has already gone a little bit too far left. Interesting. William says, replying to Terry, uh, I was doing my daily devotional out of Proverbs 12. Applicable warning to Chancellor Biden, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, have that conversation. Date self says, apocalyptic, you card you. Um, let's see, what else here? Oh, <laughs> Puckley says, date self, you can always change. That's nice. Uh, Eat Commie says, Jimmy was the jester for royal lizard people. <laughs> <laughs> the theories can be all over the place. They really can. But honestly, at this point, yeah, y'all see the tweet. She has not taken it down. What has she tweeted since then? I don't know if she's she's tweeted anything, acknowledging it, apologizing. I mean, aren't we supposed to believe believe all uh, believe all women? I'm sure a good amount of the people that were uh, accusing him are women. So. Throw your hands up and just say whatever it is, whatever it is. All right, it's time we cycle back to another person that has some interesting stuff around them. But unfortunately, we're not talking about that today. We're talking about uh, Joe Biden and not any accusations or any questionable things, as some of you all have put in the comments. <laughs> and, uh, Rub my leg down. That'll wrap that about up. But you need to hear what Joe Biden said at a speech today because it was just it, He's angry, he's yelling at people, it's, it's scary, it's sad, we don't know what's going on. We beat Farmer this year! We beat Farmer this year, and it mattered! We beat Farmer this year! We beat Farmer this year, and it mattered! We're gonna change people's lives! What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> I don't know why Joe Biden is saying he beat Pharma. He might be talking about insulin prices, which despite all the, the, just the, the bragging that Joe Biden has done, he actually just redid what Trump did, but worse, because insulin prices are still more expensive now than they were when Trump was in office. He had put forth executive orders to slash insulin prices and bring them down so that type 1 and type 2 diabetic Americans could get what they needed. And Joe Biden on his, what was it, second or third day of office said, nope, get that out of here. Nope. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> and said what are we talking about gutted it and then turned around a year later in the inflation reduction act and included just a little bit of legislation <laughs> that redid the insulin recovery but at the same time did not drop the prices that far down at least not anywhere near where trump had dropped them so whatever he's saying about beating Big Pharma is all cap. And you know what we say to cap artists? Stop the cap. Stop it right now. Stop the cap right now, Joe. You didn't do anything. You didn't beat Big Pharma. You barely beat your shoes when you were jumping into them this morning. Let me tell you, they probably kicked you out a few times. You had to really get Jill Biden to sit there, maybe even the Easter Bunny, and be like, all right, one foot in. All right, you got it. You got it. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> and still failed. Still. So obviously Joe Biden shaking his arms, screaming at a cloud. People have been quote tweeting this and sharing it all around. Pfizer, <laughs> how do we tell him? Maybe he got them to raise his 10%, trying to make sense of it and failing. 10% for the big guy. Hey, that's a good one right there. Everybody is really confused as to what Joe Biden is even talking about because we have sense and we know Joe Biden ain't do nothing. Ain't do nothing. <clears throat> so obviously here's the article about it. Biden is meeting with heck. Uh, met with heckles and poorly attended Wisconsin Labor Day speech. Yeah, because Americans are too busy grilling for, apparently, 16 cents cheaper for burgers and hot dogs on the 4th of July, but instead on Labor Day. <laughs> uh, to attend your speech, Joe. President Biden again spoke to the nation after his disastrous and divisive speech in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on Thursday night. This time, Biden stood before very few people in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to commemorate Labor Day. Biden spoke about his commitment to unions and thanked them for the support over the years, while bashing those 75 million Americans who did not vote for him in 2020. The crowd uh, reported Myth and Forms' Sean Freshick, oh my gosh, I know him, who was in attendance, was underwhelming. Biden was heckled by a man shouting, let him go. No, 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 no. Look, everybody's entitled to be an idiot. This is what he thinks of his political opposition. Extreme MAGA Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and our social security. They embrace political violence. Ultra MAGA. <laughs> Apparently.
<laughs> the crowd at Joe Biden's Labor Day event in Milwaukee was underwhelming. Oh my gosh. There's not supposed to be standing room. gosh there were bigger crowds for trump in the midst of the biden administration when he was destroying the, the country and coming off of a pandemic there were bigger crowds then for a former president in the reels of a pandemic when he was still only doing campaign rallies at airfields in fact i was in attendance at a rally of his what was it like may or june or so when Vernon Jones, David Perdue, and all sorts of people spoke at the event, those are his primary endorsed candidates uh, for the primaries in Georgia earlier this year. And I was there. Trump came in at an airfield. Okay, this was right way out in the middle of nowhere, not very close to where a lot of people live. People had to drive out there. They had to park out there for hours. And at the same time, there were still bigger crowds. There was more space. There was, the, you know how, you know how the president has to have these people standing behind him. There's one set of bleachers for them, just one big line. For Trump, there were three different sets. Some of them blocked by the camera feeds. One here, one here, one here, for much larger crowds. I think it was actually multiple of these put together to form one big one. And then the lines where Trump would walk in and the camera people, all that. It was so much bigger and so much more alive but this is what we've got with joe pretty sad newsmax's benny johnson pointed out that former trump more than two years out of office exactly what i said still draws massive crowds of supporters as he did in wilkes bar last week biden re-upped his contention that america first conservatives and supporters of trump are enemies to his regime and the american people biden said that he and america first conservatives have a starkly different vision for this country for his part, Biden believes that men who identify as transgender should have the same protections under law as women and th that the federal government should remake the energy sector to benefit Chinese lithium battery makers and should restrict fossil fuels for heating, energy, and transportation. Biden claimed that conservatives propagate violence and hatred before going on to say that those Republicans that agree with him are all right, that those that don't embrace what he calls the extreme ideology of parental rights, belief in biological gender, and commitment to American prosperity over globalism. The extreme... <laughs> as he says, Ultra. Uh, using a term that his administration spent six months of research to come up with, in Congress have chosen to go backwards to full of anger, violence, hate, and division. Then he slammed all those political opponents in Congress who didn't vote for as many mass spending bills, pulling out tiny parts of those bills to claim that Republicans didn't vote for small components, when in fact it was the entirety of the spending bills that conservatives took issues with, like the billions, and, billions, and billions, did I mention the billions of dollars to Ukraine? And that was about like what the, the if I put four billions for every time I just hit the button, that's only a percentage of how many billions were actually sent to Ukraine. Billions. <laughs> you're telling me, you're telling me this is the president of the United States, right? Right. <laughs> then he brought up the January 6th riot, saying that people died, not recognizing that the one person who was killed was a Trump supporter by Capitol Police. He leaned into the 6th, saying that rioting is what Republicans stand for. This is after an insane summer of violence in 2020 that Democrats advocated for, and his own vice president raised money to bail out the people for. Meanwhile, here in Georgia, we lost a dang old good Wendy's. They burned down a Wendy's for Rayshard Brooks, a man who literally attempted to kill a police officer. And that's who they're marching for. Justice for Rayshard Brooks. Whole, like, makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? I don't... I don't know. Eat Call Me says, Kid has it figured out. I like it. Make sure you smash that like button. And actually, real quick before we uh, continue on with the next few subjects, because we're going to talk about some kids that don't have things quite as figured out as I do. And I'm not, I'm not bragging or anything. These people are not healthy. But before we do that, I want to give, a, of course, a huge shout-out to all our people here on all of our different platforms, including Rumble and Gitter. I also want to remind you guys that this show is supported by viewers like you. So if you're interested in supporting our show and joining our Hall of Heroes, which will actually be resetting this month, so you won't see this after today's show. But you will if you join the Hall of Heroes, which you can do by donating over on our DonorBox. If you guys have been trying to super chat or anything, 
You can't do that because YouTube has demonetized me. So if you want to support our show, you'll have to manually do it over through DonorBox. I'll read your messages out loud. If you have a question or a comment or you just want to make sure you know that I'm supported, all those options are available in the description below. They're scrolling right over here if you want to read that out. And they're also in the chat if you want to donate and support the channel. We also, of course, support Cash App donations, which are right above me. So if you use the Cash App, you can just type in the code ChandlerCR. Both of the C's are capital and the second R is capital as it is right up there. All the donations go to the same place and they'll be read out up here. If you don't want to appear in the Hall of Heroes, you can also mark your donation as anonymous and you can write that in the Cash App note and I won't put your name up there. Um, but either way, I appreciate any and all support that goes my way to the show and I really appreciate it. It goes towards creating better content for the show. As you guys can see, we've continued to improve the quality of the show. We're doing all sorts of new things, including the gaming show over on Rumble, which I'll tell you guys a bit more about in a second. But it all goes towards supporting my ability to create this content for you guys and do this all. I really appreciate this. I've been in this uh, world for now approaching soon to be my four year anniversary will be in October of my involvement in politics. So it's been a long, wild journey about as long as a presidential administration and i've seen two of them so far so we're gonna keep on going uh we're gonna keep bringing the heat for y'all so thank you guys so much for the support once again it's all down there if you would like to financially support the show it all comes down to you and last but not least i want to show you guys our brand new rumble channel you can find it just by visiting the link in the description and also in the chat you just look up chandler crump you'll see i'm live on rumble right now and we have a people few people watching us over there we also of course do gaming streams right here on rumble so if you want to see me play games like fortnite splatoon 2, Battlefield 2042, and all sorts of cool things coming very, very soon, then make sure you subscribe to our Rumble channel right here. All of my content is there, both political and gaming. If you're really only into politics but want to still see me without any censorship, then you can subscribe to me right here. And if you want to see my gaming, it will exclusively be on Rumble. Uh, so if you want to see any of that, once again, it is all available for you over on Rumble. And aside from all that, thank you guys so much for the support. Pucklytics is happy fourth anniversary. I really appreciate all of you. I'll read a few more comments before we continue on. Uh, Pucklytics is BLM loves death unless it's a police officer pulling the trigger. Yeah, that's true. They just they love abortion. They love all that. It's insane. Apocalypse is Battlefield 2042 is an L game. Stop the cap. Now, Battlefield 2042 is actually very good at this point. And, no, and when it first launched, it was kind of bad. I'll tell you that. And I've been playing since launch. I got it for free with my graphics card. And so that's why I didn't buy the game. I got it with my graphics card. So I guess technically I did, but still. Um, it's been a fun game to play, and I really enjoy it. So you should tune in and watch me play it. Plus, I snipe on the game, and it's very fun to watch sniping, at least in my opinion. Uh, well, I guess I am a sniper, so maybe I am a bit biased. Either way, we're going to jump into this very last story here, but thank you guys for uh, interacting with the gaming content. It's a lot more popular than I thought, which I really appreciate, so if you guys want to see the other side of me gaming with my friends, it's all available on our Rumble channel. But now, let's jump into this very last story, which sadly is not as fun as gaming, and is people that are not as well figured out as I am, and it's really sad to think about. Uh, but this story right here comes directly from Chicago, the Children's Hospital of Chicago, uh, which is just insane. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago published this gender conversation featuring a 13-year-old trans child arguing that kids are never too young to learn about gender transition. You're going to want to see this. And this is also my first time watching this, so let's see just how bad this is. Get some audio here. I think one thing that um, probably should be explained to a lot of people is you're like, you're never like too young to know about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like it's something that people should be taught like especially at a young age because it's easier to learn that way and that way it's something you've always known. And I feel like a lot of people think that, oh, my kids are gonna be around trans people. They're gonna wanna be just like them. Well, maybe, maybe it's like a good thing for people who don't know that they're trans to be around trans people so i'm sorry i'm sorry what now <laughs> i'm sorry what now she uh, i probably shouldn't say she i probably shouldn't say she i don't know i don't know you, you've got uh, it's fishnets and I, I guess a good looking dress i don't know though this is some provocative clothing for let's see here Oh yeah, a 13 year old. Come on now. What are we What are we talking about? So I don't know. I guess I guess I can't say she, but what I can say is this person, <laughs> this Woper child, 
in the wise words of Great Andre, uh, is, is is basically talking about how, well, if my children see transgender people, they might want to be transgender themselves. Usually that's a that's a catch all like no that's not true they try to defend against that this Wilper child is like no that's actually a good thing that's the entire point acknowledging what we're all saying are you serious right now think that oh my kids are gonna be around trans people they're gonna want to be just like them well maybe maybe it's like a good thing for people who don't know that they're trans to be around trans people so they can get that advice they can help understand themselves better and I feel like it's a good thing for just people to like they don't just just for them to know about this stuff because it spreads awareness mm -hmm. it spreads awareness so for every single parent that was called a domestic terrorist in Virginia for demanding that critical race theory and disgusting content kind of similar to that, doesn't get implanted and ingested into schools and ingested by students so that they can see that you were right. And for every tyrant that called these parents domestic terrorists, I hope you see that people are going to get more and more fed up with the direct and blatant lunacy you have been promoting for all of these years. And to this, this young person, I don't... I don't know if you're a boy or a girl. I don't know what you identify as. I don't know what you were born as. And I bet you're just as confused as I am, sadly. I hope that you can grow up and figure out just what happened to you. I know there's a lot of people that are coming up and detransitioning and being like, my life was destroyed. And I'm sad that this had to happen to you. I hope you didn't do anything permanent and harmful. And I do hope that you can, like I said, grow up and discover who you really are and come to terms with what you were born as. But to the people that can't, and to the people that eventually do, I'm sorry to both of you, I really am. We are victimizing our next generation. And it's disgusting to see how prevalent this has become. How prevalent. I have people in my Instagram comments wearing dresses, but they're boys. And they're talking about, well, actually, I'm a girl, and this is my new name. And it's like, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Because eventually, they're going to go back and be like, well, I, I, was, I was wrong. Demi Lovato went by they, them pronouns for quite a couple of years now. And then earlier this year was like, listen, y'all, I'm going I'm to keep, keep it a buck with y'all. All right? I'm a, yep. I, was, I, was, I was wrong. I'm not they, them. I am Demi Lovato. I'm a girl. More and more people are starting to come out. Now, not all of them are going to do that. Not, not all of them are going to be willing to swallow their pride and be like, I was wrong. I was wrong. Not all of them are going to be like, holy crap, what happened to me? Some of them are just going to be like, no, this is me. This is my body. They'll be perfectly happy. And you know what? That'll be fine. But to the children that only ever knew this brand new gender that they were told they were, or only ever knew seeing boys dressed like this person, and like I said, I don't, don't know what, who or what they are, but saw that and said, well, if that person could do it and I look kind of like them, why can't I do it? To them, that, 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 that is all they knew. I pray for you. <laughs> and I hope things can get a whole lot better because if the more we allow this in the culture, even as this person admits, dressed almost as bad as Jill Biden on a Sunday afternoon, walking into an empty stadium with Joe Biden, directing him right alongside the Easter Bunny, I hope they can find a better way. I really do. Because this person admits <laughs> that that's what they want. This person wants children to see them dress like this. And wants children to be like, Mommy, Mommy, what's that? Mommy, Mommy, can I get fishnets and some weird dress that shows off my entire uh, up torso and, and stomach? <laughs> and can I wear this weird glove thing too? Please? <laughs> I want to do that. And you, you better hope your mommy's like, Timmy, let's, let's just go home so you can play with trucks. And not like, yeah, Timmy, that's who you are. That's who you are, yep. Timmy. It's who you are. So I hope things can get a whole lot better than how they are now. But without any further ado, that will wrap up our show for today. Thank you guys so much for being here. Robert Arsis, welcome to the liberal world order. I know. I know. It is some insane. Astral Clump says, go to jail and do not collect 100 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Sit in jail and think about what you've done. Seriously. Apocalyptic says, my high school classifies abortion as a form of birth control. Ugh, crazy. 
Aaron's is gonna have to check everyone in a dress just to make sure these days. Terrible. Terrible, terrible. Astro says, I have had six friends, kids in the past 10 years decide they're this, that, or the other, and two that have been um, Tavistock for treatment. Oh, uh, been to Tavistock. I guess that's a, that's a hospital or something, or a gender aff affirmation clinic or something like that. Just straight up sad. Girls getting double mastectomies and boys getting inverted or some some weird stuff like that i don't even know what words to describe it that are brand safe but let me tell you guys it's it's a scary day the way things are right now and i hope 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 things can get better than they are anyway thank you guys so much for tuning in i'm gonna check and make sure i'm not missing any support from you guys i don't want to miss out on anything once again all those options to support the show are directly linked in the comments below we're gonna be back very soon again tomorrow on tuesday at 8 for our next political stream crump live we may be back later on this evening around six or seven or so for some gaming stay tuned over to the rumble channel make sure you have your subscriptions on so that you will never miss anything i think we jumped in a few because we have a, we're at 178 right now let's see if we can hit 200 i know we have 5,000 subscribers on the user profile but this is the brand new channel which is linked in the chat so make sure you subscribe to this brand new rumble channel where all my stuff will be linked we're live right now and all the gaming stuff is there as well so make sure you stay tuned for all of that and again aside from all that i'll see you next time free thinkers don't forget to spread the virus of intelligence and have a great afternoon peace out We're the